Okay, does everyone want to get started for the It's a little after four, so get started. Um, and we are rolling. So welcome to the January 20th, 2015 meeting of the Rotation Transportation the Parking Commission. Exciting first meeting of the new year. I'm sure everyone's anticipating over the holidays. And now the day has finally arrived. So um, my name is Ryan O'Donnell. I'm the chair of the commission and uh, also the Ward 3 City Councilor. And I'd like to start by going around the table and introducing ourselves to the benefit of the public. Um, starting with our Vice Chair. I'm Elisa Klein, the Ward 7 City Councilor. I'm Richard Cooper, a citizen. Green Titan, Planning Sustainability. Ned Huntley, Director of Public Works. Alex Bullock, just tra Traffic Engineer. Dave Pomeranz, Director of Central Services. Forestall Parking Clerk, Parking Enforcement Administrator, Devin Bruce, Planning Board. James Longfall, Citizen. And uh, I note there's a, a quorum present, so I'll call the meeting to order. Let me also note the audio and video <coughs> recording of this meeting. And we'll begin like we do every meeting with uh, a public comment session. Um, if any member of the public would like to speak on any subject, you're, you're welcome to do it now. Um, is there anyone here who would like to do that, or is there a kind of observation? Um, we also have an item down later in discussion about crosswalk safety, and that's another opportunity to, to speak at that point. Um, so seeing as there's no one who wishes to speak, I'll kind of save you my usual um, introduction to public comment, and we'll jump right into the meeting. Um, first up is item four, approval of the minutes. Uh, accept a motion on that? So moved. Okay. Second. Okay. Um, any discussion on these minutes? Um, okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Was in here. All in favor. Okay. okay. We have three abstentions. Let's see. How many people do we have? One, two, three. Um, any reports from committees? None to speak of. Uh, number, item six, uh, DPW updates. Uh, nothing for this one. Nothing? Nothing. Working on the payment contract for next year. Uh, this year. Okay. Any questions for DPW and anything? Sure. Um, any um, progress in just uh, in, um, let's see, planning traffic on At this moment, uh, we're planning due this year, uh, but we're more focused right now on paving contract uh, because traffic common is really smaller and we don't really need a huge contract, but right now paving is kind of focused at this moment. Questions or comments? Okay. Now, um, we at the last meeting we approved our rules. Um, since, as a result of the mayor's administrative order, we were kind of uh, reconstituted, and the rules have been included in your, in your packets. As part of them, we created one subcommittee um, on, bicy on bicycle and pedestrian, the bicycle and pedestrian subcommittee. And because it's essentially a new committee, we have to appoint members to it, even though the members that may be appointed to the committee are pretty much the same ones who were serving on the, I don't know, the, the, the committee as it used to exist. So, pursuant to rules, uh, Councillor Klein and I have um, drawn up a letter, also in, in your materials, of, of 10 people who we would like to appoint. I think to make it official, I'll just make the motion um, to approve, uh, to appoint these 10 people written in the letter. And Council, I don't know if, or anybody who would like to second that motion. Can we second that? Okay, so the motion's on the floor. <coughs> Is there any discussion on, on the appointments to the bicycle and pedestrian supplement? 
Well then, all in favor. Well, we're not the voters, we're on the committee. Oh, so what we're doing is appointing members to the committee. And the, the rules that we passed um, specify simply that members can be appointed to subcommittees after they're nominated by members of the commission and confirmed with a majority vote. So there's, so there's no conflict of interest on my voting myself in. You can certainly abstain. That might not be a bad idea. Right. Okay. And they'll make the vote more interesting. <laughs> so that's that's the mechanism here. And yeah, it's a little bit technical and, and uh, confusing, but we'll follow our own rules. So any any further discussion on the appointment? Okay. So now all in favor. Any opposed? And one abstention. Three abstentions. Oh, three abstentions. Oh, that's right. Three abstentions. Okay. Notwithstanding your four, really, balance. Well, you didn't. Okay. 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 Well, congratulations. Thank you. Um, all right. So now, item eight is an ordinance uh, that comes to us from, from planning. And so, Wayne, I don't know if you'd like to. Sure. So the short version is, is the city is required bicycle parking for I don't know, 10 years now. Um, but it hasn't been set formula for what it is. So if you're doing, actually, if you don't require, if you haven't required in central business. So anywhere but central business district, bicycle parking is required, and certain terms negotiated case by case. Um, they brought up the new hotel on um, Con Street, and there are like, how many racks do we need, and there's some back and forth. And it just seemed like it's worth spelling out what we're looking for. We had done, with James's help, we had plagiarized horribly from Cambridge's bicycle standards, and we created a manual that was sort of a formal manual. But this sort of codifies the, the, the rules, um, clarifies the rules. Any questions? Yes. My question is, uh, I'm sorry, Wayne, I, I haven't had time um, until just in the last hour to look this through, but could you maybe say a few words about how uh, how you came up with or you know, what sources you used to come up with the, uh, the, the requirements? For instance, I'm thinking about um, uh, in the table, about most two thirds of the way down, K-12 school, college, et cetera, uh, 1.0 space per classroom. So Sounds so that one in particular small. from one of the comments you got, or you or somebody else are going to suggest it or two, but the short answer is there are no good studies. So we're for parking, there's lots of studies that are out there, um, and parking standards tend to reflect what's out there on the ground. Bicycle standards tend to be somewhat more aspirational, um, so it's not a good standard. So PVPC did all this work for us, looking at standards elsewhere. And so these numbers, some of these numbers came from other towns, Again, they're not like for parking centers, it's IT settings. How do you park here? They really just sort of what other communities have done. So, can I ask a follow up question then, which would be um, Is there any way that we could build in flexibility? So, if we say, you know, one space per classroom, and that's what a school puts in, and it turns out that they actually need 10 spaces per classroom, um, then so no, yeah. I mean it's sort of what we right now we have a standard it's up the planning board case by case, but they still couldn't revisit them. We could certainly learn from the mistakes we make. Um, you know, first classroom comes through and we see bicycles lock the trees, we could change it and it wouldn't affect that classroom or be proactive. Um, when did you do anything with Inventory, or do we have any kind of inventory as a city of um, bike racks at this point to kind of um, use that information to inform what we, we're doing? Do we know how much they're used, the ones that we have, that kind of thing? Yeah, that's a good question, but no, we didn't. I mean, it would be used, you know, that would, PVC was doing the legwork for us, that was beyond their scope, so I'm mostly looking at other towns we use. I'm just wondering, because I know that when I, I go frequently to JF, and I see in the nice weather that the bike rack, the few bike racks that there are, are completely filled. And so I think that could be a good kind of jumping off point from which to make a decision about how many we right. want to recommend. Right, that's a good point. We could start, I mean, for all uses, that would be difficult if we're talking about narrowing it down to, well, couldn't I say over the time council votes in this? I mean, we could in April 
go measure, you know, how many bikes are there in the schools and how many classrooms are in the homes that there are. It will probably not be useful. And, and I say, so because the biking tech committee didn't exist, we didn't take this before them, they did email the former members, once in the future former members, and the only email I got, I can't remember who this was from, had a couple of changes, but one was to change that number from one to two. But the other approach for, for both of you guys is, I have no objection to it three or even four. I, you know, we don't want to be an outrageously big number, but to some extent this is against us. So, well, so I had promised this committee that I would do some looking into crosswalk things, and I'm happy to see it. We've already done some sort of assessment thing, but I was, I have seen recently um, a bicycle study with an exposure to you know, some, my trying to estimate how much, if you've got this population, there's <coughs> bike traffic. If I could find that and give you some reference to point to, uh, do we have time to hold that in? Yeah, I mean, so the timing is does the council, is the council already referred to that? Yeah, we, we refer to the ordinance. So we'll probably do public hearings for the planning board and ordinance separately in early February. Uh, and we'll go back to city council maybe late February, more like early March. So we have a little bit of time. Well, and in some sense, I think having some guidance is better. I mean, you never know when the project is going to come before planning board. So having something's better than nothing if I don't come up with it quick enough. But I'll, I'd, I'd like to give it a try. Okay, that'll be good. Another uh, technical uh, detail, Wayne. Um, the, let's see, or two, two details actually. And, um, I see it. The, the, the recommended um, style is um, loop, post and loop, or inverted view, or it's number 12. Thank you, number 12. Preferred designs are post and loop, inverted view, and wave. Wave is uh, just recommended. I think by our own. Uh, wave is not recommended? Wave is not recommended. Oh, okay. Yeah. And the other is issue is um, Uh, about uh, vertical racks. Where did I see that about? Um, I think it's in the definition. Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, or in a vertical position with one wheel on a level surface. Um, actually, I would say that's not necessary that it be on a level, that, that any wheel need be on a level surface. The designs out there, including ones that Smith just, Smith College just installed that are great. Uh, that have just a, a hook for the front wheel. You lift the bike just a few inches off the ground and you hook uh, through the front wheel, you're supposed to the front wheel, and the, there's no wheel on any level surface at all, surface. But the rack works great, it's efficient storage, you can um, easily take use of an overhang to protect bikes from the weather. Um, so I, I would hate to eliminate that okay. arbitrarily. We, did, we had some discussion with people who say that back and forth is really just about the weight of bicycles. Is that what you're saying for some people? Uh -huh. But I mean, it, it's wrong with me. You want to make a motion to make those two changes? Yes. So, okay. um, is there exact language that we need, or are we just making deletions? Could you describe your amendment uh, for the Okay. Um, with regard to the vertical position, so I, pro <coughs> I propose uh, a friendly amendment that uh, the, the section defining bicycle parking, 350-2, uh, where it says, uh, or in a vertical position with one wheel on a level surface be changed to just say, uh, or in a vertical position. Do you want to do that separately from the other comment you Not unless I anticipate objections for it. So you want to keep the wave in section 12? No, I, no I'd like to delete the wave in section 12. You also, while you're at it, want to do the uh, one per classroom, do at least be two per classroom? Um, and then the way that they have been fine for if I, if I do a quick calculation in my head, I would, I would say, um, based on classroom buildings at uh, Smith, it's more like, um, more like at least 10 per classroom. And if I, how many classrooms are there in Northampton High School? Are there, are there 25 classrooms in the high school? Or easily, you're gonna have more there are hundreds. You're going to have more people on bikes at Smith than there are high schools. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, so think about the high school. If there are 25 classrooms, I'm just guessing here. 
I mean, but it, say it's 25 classrooms, there are easily hundreds of bikes out there on a, on a typical biking day. So that says at least four or five spaces per classroom. I'm not amazing, so okay. throughout whatever number you think, I'm not making against it. I, I don't know the number well, is. Let's say, uh, I, I so the problem with the number is that, we, I mean, we're talking classrooms. Yes. I think that's a, a conceptual thing. It but, is. but projects that come before planning board go from hotels that's to right. businesses. To, yeah. So I don't know how you're going to, and, and I would not think we need that many for those. So I don't know how you get, I'm not. We're going to have to revisit. Yeah. Great. So make it, I propose uh, that the classroom number be five per classroom. And we'll just have to revisit when we. And to see how the other requirements pan out. Okay. And we do have the ability to reduce but not to increase compact year questions. So that's an argument for doing five because if someone said someone has this compelling argument that everybody gets here by limousine, therefore they couldn't buy a possible couldn't possibly buy a school, we could argue. So. Well let's get the amendment. So everyone understands the amendment? Is there is there a second? Second. Yeah. Okay. Uh Director and second. So discussion on the amendment itself? I, I have a question, uh, Wayne. Is, you're saying the numbers that we put in here in this table, for example, the planning board could reduce? I thought these case would be, case. but I thought in a case by case, these would be kind of a minimum. So no, we, so we can never increase them, but we can never decrease increase. them because that's a unique argument. I see. Somebody else. Okay. So using my example, really, there's a case where there's a classroom building where you expect everybody to come by vehicle there's no way to buy some um, Another question, Rich, how many thousand square feet is uh, State Street? About well, 5,000. 5,000. So here we have 0.5 per 1,000 square feet, so that would be two and a half spaces. That seems also on the low side. I mean, there are often five bikes parked outside your place on a given summer day. So I guess, <coughs> I guess I would, I would be interested in increasing from 0.5 per 1,000 to at least one per 1,000. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about you know, stores on Main Street, for example. If everyone had to have a bike rack that you know, serves two bicycles, there wouldn't be much of a sidewalk left. Right. Well, this is for only new development. This mm -hmm. is new. Correct. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Not for existing. Or change of use of the building. That's probably back in there too. James, are you adding to your amendment? Um, uh, relative yeah. to the Again, if I state street issue. Either that or a new amendment, if, if people have concerns about it, then we should that be. Well, is there, is there any objection to, first of all, what, what, are, what are you adding that you want to use it to? From, from changing from, from just, just working on the rough numbers that we just talked about, changing uh, in the table for commercial retail and seasonal retail from 0 0.5 per 1,000 to 1.0 for 1,000. 1.0. Well, um, can we do? Is there any objection to doing this? incorporating that? The amendment? Okay. So, without objection, that's that's part of the amendment now, which is on the floor. Um, is there any more comment or discussion on that amendment that James offers? Okay. All in favor of the amendment? Any opposed? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, you still have the the main well. Tell you the truth, <laughs> I'm not so sure we actually ever put this, or uh, I'm not sure anyone made a motion to put this ordinance on the floor. Am I right about that? I think we started to talk about it. I move we recommend this right. ordinance as amended. Very good. Is there a second? Thank you. Okay. Um, although I, I might be mistaken about that. Well. <laughs> okay. I'm sure we can sort it out somehow. We, we've at least put it on the floor twice, so we're safe. Um, so is there any further discussion? Okay, all in favor of, this is a positive recommendation from the commission, meaning it's, it's, it's leaving. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you. I'm sorry. Yes. It says uh, 2014. Does it matter? Or was it started in 2014? In okay. I mean, we'll, okay. if we have to fix it, we'll fix it somewhere else. Thanks. Okay. That's great. Thank you. Um, so item nine, we return now to the discussion of crosswalk safety that we had begun in December. 
And since that time, we have a number of, uh, a little bit of, of new information that we've gotten from Central Services and the uh, Police Department and Department of Public Works. And this is in the materials as well. From the DPW, we have really an inventory of all the crosswalks in the city. Um, by street and the number of crosswalks. I haven't added this up to, oh, well, yeah, for a total of 319 crosswalks accounted for in the city. Um, Northampton Police Department has sent along statistics on bicycle and pedestrian injuries, um, which you can see as well. And finally, uh, Central Services passed along the, the form that is used for requesting streetlight modification. And the reason why we have all this is because at the last meeting we were discussing how to essentially do a, a survey of, of where the important crosswalks are um, to focus on in terms of safety uh, given, given recent events and also just as good policy generally. So I, I think what we have to do is just return to that idea and see where we want to go with it. I frankly am, am not exactly sure what we should do at this point with the information that we have. I would just restate what I said last time, which is um, this is a very emotional issue and no small part because of recent events. And what I liked about the discussion we had last time is we were no way reactionary. Um, we were thoughtful and I think that this commission is, is best served by doing this kind of analysis and not proceeding in any case um, unless we have engineering studies and facts to back up what our proposals are going to be. Uh, so actually, I think this is a really good direction for us to go in terms of this conversation. But with that, I would actually ask others to, to chime in and state their opinion um, about what we ought to do. I want to thank uh, you, Councilor O'Donnell, for your uh, reference to New York City's Vision Zero program, which I think is an excellent model. And the whole premise is uh, that uh, motor vehicle and pedestrian and bicycle crashes are not um, uh, random, unforeseeable accidents, but rather are an inevitable consequence of uh, the way our transportation system is designed and the way our culture educates or fails to educate uh, drivers and pedestrians and bicyclists and enforcement. Um, and uh, I think New York is laudable. Of course, their model is based on uh, the country of Sweden, which started the Vision Zero program. Uh, the idea is uh, there should be zero fatalities from traffic crashes. And uh, I think we should be following the same example as you uh, obviously suggested. And uh, I think um, it's a mistake for us to, uh, to think that um, every single uh, crash is unique and uh, should be studied uh, case by case in the absence of the context. I think the context actually is everything. And the context is we have a transportation system that we've inherited. Uh, the, this transportation commission was started largely as a result of a fatality on Elm Street. Smith College student in 1999 uh, that led to the safe, uh, to the, uh, the mayor's um, safe streets task force. Safer streets. Safer streets task force, which then led to the, eventually to this commission. Uh, there have been numerous fatalities since then. Um, we can argue about whether it's more or less than the national average, but there's no question that they're there. We see what the numbers are. Um, the, the newspaper has studied many times uh, whose fault it is, pedestrians or motorists. It turns out it's both. Uh, motorists are more likely uh, to fail to comply with the law than pedestrians are. There are many letters to the editor all the time in the newspaper uh, complaining about pedestrians uh, jaywalking, but when the Gazette went out and studied it, it turns out that non-compliance was higher among motorists than pedestrians. The great majority of these uh, uh, pedestrian crashes actually happen in crosswalks, uh, and the law is very clear when the pedestrian's in the crosswalk, it's the motorist's responsibility. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, in my point of view, uh, the DPW and the city have made excellent strides towards improving the safety of numerous places around town. And I want to uh, call out especially uh, your efforts 
on uh, redesign of Con Street and North Street, which are clearly designed with pedestrians in mind and bicycles in mind and slowing the traffic down. And I think that slowing the traffic down is absolutely the central key. Um, uh, above about 35 miles an hour, the chance of a pedestrian surviving, as we know, are less than 50-50. Furthermore, above 35 miles an hour, the chance of a driver even uh, seeing the pedestrian in time to respond at all are much lower. And we know this anecdotally. We know that on Main Street, where traffic is very low, compliance is very high uh, with the crosswalk laws. Drivers tend to stop for, the, for pedestrians in the crosswalk. But as soon as you get out of downtown, and I'm sure you all know this anecdotally, you see much, much lower compliance. You see higher speeds, and you see pedestrians waiting on the side of the road for traffic finally to stop. And I see this all over uh, Elm Street, Prospect Street, South Street, pedestrians standing there waiting for somebody, for a driver to give them a break. Uh, and there the speeds tend to be 35 miles or higher. Uh, so uh, I think we have, we have a number of excellent models that we should be following. Uh, the best one I can think of is Elm Street, which used to be a free-for-all, a 50-foot wide, uh, essentially unregulated free-for-all, uh, where there were uh, where the fatality uh, happened of Tina Hofke, the Smith student in 99, uh, where uh, uh, one driver stopped for her and another, another driver uh, peeled around uh, beyond, if I'm getting this correct. In any event, that was, that's a, that was a very common instance that, that uh, uh, drivers would, one driver would stop, another driver would pass around. There was so much space that there was a feeling that that was okay. There were no bike lanes, there were no curb extensions, uh, the crosswalks were not raised, uh, there was no um, uh, flashing radar sign uh, telling you your speed. All of that went in as a result of that fatality and the resulting citywide conversation. And the culture has completely changed there. Compliance is much, much higher. There have been no fatalities since then. I, I don't know what the numbers are of before and after in terms of crashes along that stretch of Elm Street per year before and after. But uh, I don't think anybody could argue that uh, it's not significantly better. Everybody at Smith knows this. It's much safer. There's a much more of a sense of a shared roadway among drivers, pedestrians, and bicyclists. Uh, I very frequently come out of College Lane now on my bike. I would say more than half the time, drivers stop for me, even though they're not supposed to stop for bicyclists. But there's, uh, this, we're talking about the raised crosswalk here, the intersection of the main entrance to campus. The culture has changed there. Uh, and I feel it's, there's no question that it's for the better. It's much safer, it's, it's a, uh, there's much less of this uh, double jeopardy with drivers passing around other drivers to stop for pedestrians. Um, the, the crossing distances are shorter for pedestrians. So this is all to say, we have an excellent model. We need to spend money. The city needs to spend money to do this. That cost a half a million dollars of Smith College's money, and, and it's Smith that continues to pay for the, uh, the, the repainting every two years of the bike lanes and the crosswalks along that stretch. But we're saving lives, and it's worth it. And that's, I think, I think our job on the Transportation and Parking Commission and on the Bicycle and Pedestrian Committee is to further those efforts and to learn from our, uh, both our mistakes and our successes and uh, focusing on that particular kind of success and on Con Street and North Street. I think we need to be uh, more proactive even than we have been in implementing traffic calming around the city. And uh, I think we have a great traffic calming program, but so far we've, we've I, I think, not been assertive enough at, um, at actually uh, putting the money where it belongs to, to get those projects on the ground. And uh, I think that's what we should do next. Actually, at this point, I'd like, um, I understand a motion to recognize um, the guests we have. We have, actually have Councillor uh, Gina Louise Sheriff from Ward 4 here, uh, who joined us last meeting. And I'd also like to recognize anyone else Members of any other members of the public who may want to chime in at any time during this uh, conversation. Um, is there a motion to recognize? Is there a second? Okay. Okay. Was that It's a little hard to hear back oh, here. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're, you're certainly not required to say anything, but uh, I wanted to recognize the room in case. Oh, well, thank you. Shall I stand up? Sure, please. Yeah, so you can hear me. I don't really have anything prepared. I'm here because. I, along with all of you, I'm very concerned about the uh, state of pedestrian safety as well as bicycles. And I so would you state your name? And Rutherford Lawrence. Platt, 78 Hillcrest Drive, Thank you. Thank you. Lawrence. Um, 
and I've written met countless letters to the Gazette. I'm sure some of you have seen them from time to time. Um, part, some of them dealing with uh, traffic and, and pedestrian safety in Northampton, as well as a variety of other topics. I have an office down at um, uh, the uh, Eric Mill on Short Street, off of Pleasant Street, uh, which is an ideal post-retirement office, because uh, I worked at UMass as a professor for a long time, but uh, did not want to continue driving over there. But I get to see Pleasant Street up close all the time, both uh, daylight and nighttime, and it is just such a dangerous place for people on foot or bikes. It really, really is. I said this, made the same statement to the meeting of the downtown um, architectural commission and planning board when the uh, uh, plan uh, for the CDC housing was first proposed, not the most recent meeting, but the one before that, uh, that the external of consequences, I, I support the building of the CDC project, but the p consequences, the implications for pedestrian safety need to be addressed by the city. A lot of them will be off-site, namely along the very narrow sidewalks on both sides of Pleasant and the crosswalks between them. Um, the, the sidewalks are narrowed by all kinds of obstructions, st overhead street lamps, signage, uh, all sorts of highway-related uh, signs, private signs, Roberto's. Uh, has a little sandwich sign which it sticks out in in the path of of uh, certainly bicyclists. And as more people live on Pleasant Street, they will be walking. There will be more pedestrians and presumably more uh, people on bicycles as well as cars. And I, I'm really hoping, as a, just a general statement, that this board, this commission. Uh, and the City Council will be aware of this particular problem uh, on Pleasant Street starting at about Mary Beth Herb's office all the way up to the center of town. My other major concern uh, is the safety of getting across Main Street other than at the King Street, Pleasant Street intersection, which works fine, um, down this way. Uh, I don't know how many of you have this sense, but when you're on one side of the street, you sort of would like to try a restaurant or a store on the other side. Oh, hell, it's not worth it trying to navigate across six lanes of cars and parking and everything else, especially if it's very dark. Um, so I'd love to see a more a, a continuous island, pedestrian island down the middle clearly dividing lanes and giving a sort of an oasis of safety between the opposing lanes of traffic so that pedestrians can get part way across, then continue. The way it is now, yes, people are respectful, as James said. Uh, most of them are, but it's still very hard to see around a truck or a bus or another heavy, big vehicle to see that pedestrian, you know, inching out uh, in the crosswalk. So that's all. I, I just think these are two important areas to consider. Thank well, you. Well, thank you very much. Are there any questions for Mr. Black? Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Um, is there anyone else, Councilor, would you like to? I'm sorry. Um, I, I don't really have anything further to add. I just wanted to, you know, I, I reviewed um, all the information that was gathered and I thank you all for it. And I'm just happy to be part of the conversation going forward about it. After. A lot of these crosswalks are in my board. Um, so, and I think there's a lot of work that we can do. So, I just like to listen. Do, you, do you get a sense of how the, the new crosswalk on South Street is well, and functioning? Um, I think many people think it's an improvement, but uh, there's still the problem that the old crosswalk is still visible. So, I, many people still cross there. Uh, I just saw someone today do it. Um, I'm sure it happens all day. And that the the new crosswalk is already you know the, the lines are not terribly visible. So um, I think it's it's not totally clear to people where this new crosswalk is and that the old one's not there anymore. Um, 
But that being said, people have indicated that, that they think it is better, but that it's still not the greatest place to cross. Uh, yeah, tr tricky engineering problem to, to say the least. Yeah. In that, in that part of town. Um, any, uh, please, yeah. Sure. Uh, my name is Kate Terzano. I live at 20 Olive Street. I'm also an assistant professor of geography and planning at Westfield State. Ms. Terzano, feel free to come to the okay. podium. Uh, I did a little study of crosswalk safety in Northampton last summer. Small N, only about 400 observations of pedestrian crossings. And I was focusing on the behavior of the pedestrian. And basically what I found was that there's a lot of inattentive behavior. Um, I expected to find a lot of people on their smartphones. That was not really the case, but I found a lot of people are following the leader. So they are letting somebody ahead of them dictate whether they should go. So they're looking at somebody else starting already crossing the street, so I'm just going to follow them into the intersection, whether it's actually safe or not. Um, what I would recommend, if you want to go forward with trying to improve the crosswalks, is to look at compliance. Um, as Jane said, there is higher compliance among the pedestrians. Um, but I would look at compliance based on different crosswalk designs. So looking at whether pedestrians are more likely to stop and look if there are flashing lights that sort of snap them out of whatever they are doing. And then also looking at compliance on um, behalf of cars, so which kind of design encourages more compliance for cars as well. So I think the different designs themselves need to be studied further. Okay, thank you. Um, any questions? Okay, not at this time, but thank you very much. Um, uh, Mike, did you write the study up? I did, and I'm actually presenting it next month in San Diego. I, I'd love to give you my email. Sure. Thank you. 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 Thank because that was one that just, based on my having walked around town, that's going to be the most problematic. Yeah, in, in fact, I'm not sure, it was a while ago when, when we corresponded, did, did you send the study to me? I don't think I did, <laughs> but I can. Because it's actually something I think that everyone on the line of commission would, would sure. like to see. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, thank you all for your comments. Um, can we all go to San Diego? And sure, I think the weather's going to be wet, please. <laughs> um, I don't have an answer for this, but just an observation. Looking at this this list uh, from the DPW, 319 crosswalks. So we will try to come up with a way to prioritize for further study and assessment, possibly applying some of the criteria we're hearing about today. I'm not sure how we would do that. Uh, obviously, we can't look at all 319, but do we look at them by do some pedestrian counts, do we do vehicle counts, I mean, I, you know, urban versus outlying areas, I, I don't know. I've been thinking about this, and I don't have an answer at this point, but clearly, if we want to proceed, we're going to have to sort of tier these somehow and come up with either a smattering from different categories or the top as far as, you know, pedestrian crossings per day, Corresponded back to the PD as far as vehicle counts for accidents. I, I don't know, but I think that would be the first step. Um, I, I apologize because I really intended to bring you some proposal about the elements that we should look at that matter. And so I, I'm, I'm sitting here saying I've given it some thought, and that's about it. But um, I, I would sort of simplify what James said and say that. Um, <coughs> Alex and Ned and Deb and James and probably you too, we know how to make a good crosswalk. I mean, give us a couple hundred thousand dollars and we can do it. But you're right, we've got 300, and so we are gonna have to prioritize them. We're gonna have to look at either the ones that are most used, the ones that are most dangerous. So I mean, and you know, it, can we stand bump outs that you plow around? I mean, it's sort of a policy decision in some cases. Um, and and it takes more than paint is my reaction. I, I've got studies that say painting a crosswalk doesn't make it a bit safer. That it, you, you actually entice the pedestrian to think that they're protected when in fact if it's a mid-block crossing, they're better off being worried. So um, I think the things that matter are mid-block or intersection. I think we ought to look at is there any improvement at all? We've got you know the really nice 
uh, you know, actuated light on South Street. That, that's a whole different kind of crosswalk than the one that's you've just been talking about at the bridge. Um, I care about where the light is. I mean, that's one of the things that I had to give you credit for when we moved the crosswalk that we, we've been talking about on South Street is it, it wasn't under a light, and now it at least is on a light for one side. Um, you know, if I could get everybody to put on white coats, we'd all be safer. You know, it's kind of that sort of problem. But I think there are a small set of things we'd like to know about the 300, and I kind of, I'm, I'm willing to give some time to go around and be assigned, you know, check those six things that we want to know about these 20 inter these 20 crosswalks and give me a month and I'll, I'll do my piece and we'll see if we could, you know, come up with some sort of criteria. Um, I think that would be more than just talking about oh, your little, a little grading sheet, but I don't see how to, I'm surprised there are 300, that's my first reaction. Um, and so I agree with you, there's got to be some sort of prioritization, but um, Ned can't hardly keep them painted right now, much less start handling bump outs and drainage and things like that. But I have seen studies that say painting a bump out, um, Knoxville, painted bump outs at the corner intersections and it improved the, the uh, stop, the people stop. So maybe there's some in-between solutions that aren't as expensive we could try. I think it might be interesting to try some things like that and see. I mean, it's not, um, you know, I brought my MUTCD. I mean, you're following the, you know, that, the book that says what you have to do. But, you know, this is, this is Wayne's book that says, you know, and it doesn't have any bicycle stuff in it. Just uh, but it does have crosswalk um, options in it that, that include things like bump outs and, uh, um, but I, I'm frustrated just with the truth of the finances of doing redesigns of highway road work. I mean, it's, you know, when you've had a chance, you've done a really great job. North Street, downtown Florence, you know, I mean, but there's 300 of them. So. Um, so I will take that action to email to you just a little, if I were doing a data collection thing, what data would we want? You know, mid-block, lights, is it, what's the, you know, on a scale of one to three, what's the paint look like? Is there any bump out? Is there, you know, is there a grade off the sidewalk? Uh, I don't, I'll have to give it some thought. I, I might like to talk to you. It's, it's your business that I'm dabbling in, so. I mean, is the prioritization of the list also such as we look at the Route 9 corridor, the Route 10, Route 5, Bridge Road, the high ADT areas that come through the community? Yeah, the places that we don't even think about that are pedestrian problems. I know that I don't. So, James says, can I, I can interject briefly first. It might also be a good thing to refer to the, the newly recreated bicycle and pedestrian subcommittee, which you sit on, and I think there's a lot of talent on that committee. I don't know if that might be something to consider. Or we don't have to make that decision now. But James and then Councilor Klein. Uh, two things, first of all, about the prioritization. Uh, it seems to me, um, well, um, I don't know if any of you is following what happened to Chloe uh, Rama, who was the 22 year old who was struck and crossed on um, the street. Uh, let me just read to you this is today's uh, report. Um, we've been playing music from Chloe's playlist on her MacBook with hopes that she will respond to her favorite music. She's still basically in a coma. Chloe also had another acupuncture and Reiki treatment today, which stimulated some arm and leg movement and eye opening during the session. Her nurse said that her eyes were wide open Sunday night at about 10.30 for about three minutes and appeared to be tracking her nurse's movements. It's about a month after the accident. Her life will never be the same. Her family's life is <coughs> just, uh, forever changed. Um, so she doesn't even show up as a fatality on here. She's just one of the hundreds of accidents, <coughs> crashes. Uh, so, uh, our, our priority should be minimizing this and maybe vision zero is the one we should have. So how do we do that? And it seems to me that the priorities, uh, we know we want the speeds to be low if there is a crash, and we want the likelihood of a crash to be low. So I would add to your list, Devin, um, we should certainly include ADT. We should also include the number of pedestrian crossings, even if it's just a rough estimate and we should include the speed of the traffic. Um, so if you have 
zero pedestrians crossing, but the speed is high, I'm not so worried. But if the speed is high and you have 100 pedestrians crossing that day, I'd worry. So it seems to me the product of those things, I mean, I'm ha happy to help with this too. I'm good with numbers and statistics, and uh, I'm happy to help in any way. Even if we have to design our own, I'm sure it's also been done elsewhere. So that was one thing about the prioritization. And um, the other thing, I'm sorry, what? Do you want to respond to I, I'm just wondering, too, if in our priorities we're thinking about where schools are, where places are that um, a number of elderly folks are likely to cross those kinds of things. I know that you know we have something across from the senior center. I'm not sure if we have kind of beefed up um, crosswalks around other locations where there are old folks crossing. Um, you know, we're just now in the coming uh, spring season getting to the crosswalks across from JFK and beefing those up. That seems like we're kind of behind the, uh, behind the curve there on that one. But I'm wondering if there are other places like that that we need to be thinking about kind of bumping up in terms of priority. I'm also wondering about the kinds, and Devin, maybe you can answer this, um, the kinds of vehicles that actually will frequent particular places so that if there are going to be 16 wheelers um, coming down certain roads, if those are places that the priority needs to be raised. I'm just wondering about kind of other ways of thinking about what we need to uh, do to prioritize certain locations. I'm just thinking about for my ward, for instance, parts of Route 9 where we have lots and lots of 16 wheelers. Um, Bridge Road, Route 9 down there. Um, and then the crosswalks around the, um, the roundabout by Look Park is uh, apparently having some problems. I don't know what the accident rate is, if we have a record of that. But So there are just places like that where we have um, just particular kinds of vehicles that I think can, and, but I, I don't know a lot about this, as you know, so I, I'm just wondering if there is some way of thinking about that. James, I remember my other um, point. The three keys of traffic calming that we've been talking about for 20 years. The whole world has been really uh, education, enforcement, and engineering. We have to focus on all three. And, and if the police chief were here, he would have something to say about enforcement. Um, we haven't talked about uh, how we want to educate people, although you have some uh, some suggestions for what we should educate them about. Um, we could certainly be talking about how to how to do better educating um, school children and the parents of those school children who are driving people around. But getting back to uh, the engineering, one of the three E's, uh, we don't have to spend $100,000 on every project. And there are examples, again, going back 20 years and more of uh, traffic calming on the cheap uh, that include, for instance, um, uh, planters. Uh, you, neck, you have a big, wide intersection, you neck it down. So uh, on, the, on the crosswalk with Fatality happened two years ago on South Street. Uh, we had barrels there for a number of months for essentially two years there. People complain because they're ugly. It doesn't have to be that. It could be. It could be planters. It can look nice. Uh, many cities have experimented with flexible bollards that uh, narrow the street down and give drivers a, a, a very strong sense that this is shared space, and it works. It slows the traffic down. Yes, there are issues with, um, with plowing that we need to worry about. But my point is just that we don't need to completely redesign and rebuild the drainage and do a full depth reconstruction of every intersection in order to improve safety significantly. I have a quick question. Um, in in our current budget, we put <clears throat> was it two hundred thousand dollars as a line item one. for one hundred thousand dollars for traffic comp. Is that correct? I believe it's one from it's in this year's capital plan. Okay. And, and um, so first. my question would be, I'm sorry, did you have something? It's a first. Yes, indeed, it's very good. Um, but my question is, do we know the status of have we spent from it? We have. We just yeah. spent how much to do South Main Street? It's close to three thousand. How much? Three thousand, possibly. It's two, three thousand four for what? South Main Street. Oh, for oh, South Main Street. Is that the line pay? Yep. Okay. And besides that, three thousand. Have we have we two dollars have we spent from the traffic calming line item? Or no, it's first year into it. Yeah. I'm um, waiting to see what happens with the capital plan with um, Bridge Street School, whether or not the funds will go towards that. With the um, potential uh, pedestrian light, 
and or at least the school lights, which is already approved through previous capital plan. Mm -hmm. So you would take some of the traffic calming money and use it towards? We could use that. It's, okay. it's part, it could be used for that. Okay. Okay, thank you. Any other? Bridge Street School or the, or JFK? Bridge Road, JFK, excuse me. So Feel free to. Sure. I have a quick comment about pedestrian counts. That I think that's a great way to try and get some data. I would make sure you do it along the sidewalks, not at the crosswalks, because if you know there's a crosswalk that's, um, I don't know, 150 feet down the street that is safer, you might walk to that one. And so you would have a higher number of people using the already safe crosswalks compared to the ones that actually need improved. One other sort of back to the details of our last meeting, the physician that came to speak to us specifically asked us to look at sight lines and, yes. and the parking there, and I, I think we we should we should at least have that discussion. Would that be on your your list? Well, what kind of vision? Sight lines are a little vaguer. I mean, we can say um, I've, I've been asking about the one on Pleasant Street, of getting rid of that one parking place. In fact, I think I asked you when you came uh, before the. CDC, or during that meeting, I asked if that removing that parking place had improved the the pedestrian crossings there, and people kind of all said, yeah, they, they thought it was working better. So I think, you know, we're after, I know we want to increase parking. Um, James wants to put parking on every street because it necks it down and narrows it up, and that's, that's true, it does. And so um, we, we need to carefully think about where we put parking in relation to the crosswalk. discussion of this. Um, Wayne, I wanted to call you up because you were the one who actually told me about Vision Zero in New York. I know it's something that you've, you've studied. Um, do you have anything to bring to the commission's attention? No, I mean, I, you know, so repeating what James said, it's speed is really important for it, I think. You know, we have a lot, I don't understand the number of projects that we have going on. Um, so a lot of the things we're talking, you know, Pleasant Street is applied for the million dollar mass works grant that we have. So some of them are, are un underway. One thing that we've talked about doing and never have done is having a comprehensive bicycle and pedestrian study citywide. Um, and so this might, as one of the things I want to with biking pet mm -hmm. coming up, but it's one that may fit in to sort of think about how do we do this stuff more systematically and think about a prioritization for everything. Okay. Well, at this point, is, unless there's any other comments that anyone like, would like to make. I think, I'd like to say that um, I think it's 18 wheelers, not 16 wheelers, is it? <laughs> I kept saying 16 wheelers, I don't think there is such a thing. <laughs> What's your new invention? 16 wheelers with a fuel efficient models. <laughs> <laughs> Still, a lot of wheels. It's just a lot of <laughs> Well, what, what I was going to suggest is, you know, at this point, it, it might be a good idea to refer kind of Devin's question, if you want to call it that, to the Bicycle and Pedestrian Subcommittee. So Devin sits on that subcommittee and others who are interested are Alex, you know, um, the liaison to the DPW, who is important to have in that discussion, I think. Um, that to me would seem like a logical course of action. Then we could develop that list. I don't know when you meet next, sometime in the February. And then maybe report back to the, um, us as a body in one month's time. I move we send up some more. <laughs> I, move, I move it go to the bicycle center. That seems a lot. You don't have to abstain from making work for yourself. Okay, so that, the motion's been made. Is there a second report? Second. A second. Any discussion on the motion to refer? Okay. Um, all in favor? Um, can I ask a question? Please. Um, do you want me to? Or do you want to wait and see what we do at the meeting? Do you want to do you want to make sure we don't hurt you? <laughs> We've heard before. <laughs> very I mean, there are, you you will know the practicality of whether what I'm suggesting we might look at is possible. So I would, I would appreciate it if you don't mind if I passed this little initial cut. That's fine. Okay. So what I'm, I'm after the timing thing. If I bring it, if I bring a, a proposal to the meeting, 
then the meeting's going to decide whether to send it back to this committee. Um, is there a way to get, other than Alex involved at that meeting, and he's not a voting member at the meeting, is there a, a, a way for me to ask their opinion about what we're working on? Yeah. I just do that. Thank you. Just my, my opinion of the rules is that Alex <clears throat> is now a voting member of the, of the committee. Just because we didn't specify that he's not. They could always change it. Congratulations, Alex. I think that's, that's I think this was a good discussion and uh, thank you again. Um, so any new business? Just back on. I just have one question about that cross box. It's uh, uh, Bridge Street is listed twice. I don't know. Is it on Bridge Street? Bridge Street is at the top of the files. Pleasant Street, King Street, Bridge Street, College Street, which seems like a lot of sequence. And then it's also in the part of Woodbine, Gates, and Bridge. So maybe the same might be able to have four. I've been fooled by Bridge Road and Bridge Street before. Well, that, that's, I guess we can look into that in discrepancy. What is the, uh, Thank you for calling me. What is the order of the list? It's not it's alphabetical. Geographical. The order of the list came from handwritten notes from our favorite oh. Martian guy. <laughs> oh, wow. If you yeah. pass it to me, I'll, I'll alpha the title. Well, that's why I made a note to alpha. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any other new business for today? Uh, just an update for the commission members on the status of the parking management study. Uh, the consultant from Walker Park and Consultants, uh, if you remember, was here in early November and did a uh, three workshop series in one day, met the city staff in the morning, the business community in the afternoon, and the public at forum at the senior center in the evening. Collected a lot of useful information, comments, observations, recommendations, etc. cetera. Uh, they have also done traffic counts, occupancy counts, uh, both on the main streets and the garages and lots with their staff. And uh, I talked with Carrie, the lead on the project last week, and she's asked for some additional data on uh, fines, uh, collection of revenue, uh, operating and maintenance costs for the garage and the lots on an annual basis for three years. Uh, uh, transaction counts for the garage with the new and the, and the old systems that we replaced in October. And she figures by the beginning of February, she's going to be looking at having a draft of some sort with the initial uh, issues and recommendations and wants to come back up and do some presentations. That's as far as I know, as far as what the program will be, but we're looking at sort of mid-February to do that. Uh, so they are moving along. That's great. Yeah, thank you for the update. And once she makes presentations in February, is that that's sort of the end of the process, or will they then go back? That's a, that would be sort of the draft that's, phase, okay. uh, and then she's going to incorporate any observations, comments, new recommendations, additional data if they need, hmm. and then there'll be a final report. Okay. Thank you very much. Will those be public meetings where the data is presented? She's going to meet with the mayor, and they're going to figure out how they want to do that um, when they get to the draft stage. It's exciting. I want to say they are, they are moving along. Anything else? Um, if they if, if they can decide, I'm sure. But can I just suggest that at some point we would want to have a public meeting about it? Just here's what we did with. You know, it's, it's public money going for a parking study, and absolutely. So I mean, I, I, I think we should get you know I comfortable would, with it, right. but eventually we would want to. Work. James, I would also uh, love to see them here give a brief presentation here at the Transportation and Parking Commission, <laughs> so that we can discuss it on the commission just mm -hmm. with the, the authors of the report. That would suffice as the public meeting too, at Could least be. one of them, because people can go and see it. I think Walker. As a company is pretty open to public meetings. I'm good about that. Okay. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. So okay. So second. Anyone want a second? <laughs> second. Any any opposed? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.